Charlie, you gonna let me help you here? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most surprising twists in teen cinema canon. Obviously, there will be major spoilers ahead. So they were watching us. This whole time. Number 20, Eleanor is Nosy Nora. Do revenge. You are now in Forevermore, the coolest, most mysterious student at Rose Hill Country Day. Do Revenge is one of the better teen films to come out over the past five years. Its colorful set and costume design make it a treat to watch, and Maya Hawk and Camila Mendez hold down the fort as the stars. But the most memorable thing about Do Revenge is its jaw-dropping twist. Is the cat out of the bag? Get out of my house. Thought so. Halfway through the film, it's revealed that Eleanor isn't who Drea thought she was at all. Eleanor is actually Nora, a girl who Drea spread a nasty rumor about when they were younger. By helping Drea get revenge, Nora was actually playing the long game and getting her own vengeance from years and years ago. You have to admire her patience. Drea hadn't changed. She was the same mean girl I met when I was 13 and she deserved everything that was coming for her. Number 19, Costa's Wife, The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2. In the first The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants film, Costas was definitely our favorite love interest. Lena hit the jackpot with that one, but things took a turn for the worse in the series' second installment. These past few months, Lena. I've just... I've missed you. Sometime after their breakup, Lena's grandfather dies and she has to go back to Greece to attend his funeral. There, she sees Costas again, but he's not alone. Lena? This is Melia? My wife. Turns out, Costas has gotten married and is expecting a baby with his new wife. Talk about shocking news for Lena. Luckily, these two make things work in the end, but this was definitely a roadblock on their path to love. I mean, why can't you just stop thinking about it and follow your heart? Because he broke my heart! Number 18, Snape Loved Lily, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> Severus Snape almost took the secret to the grave. Throughout the Harry Potter series, Snape was horrible to Harry. We sort of learn why after the revelation that Harry's father used to torment Snape, but that doesn't seem like an especially strong argument for his behavior through the series. By the end, however, we finally get the full picture. Hey. After all this time. Always. After believing that Snape was on the side of the Death Eaters, Harry learns that the opposite is true. Snape's death brings to light that he was actually in love with Lily, and feeling responsible for her death, he devoted his life to Dumbledore and the greater good. The subject of Snape's morality was a huge talking point for fans, and this was a stunning reveal. No one can know. Uh... I should never reveal the best of yourselves. Number 17, Blue's Identity, Love, Simon. Dating in the online age can be difficult, but you know what makes it more difficult? Dealing with blackmail and being in the closet at the same time. You're going to leak my emails? You're going to okay. post them on Creek Secrets? Uh, I, I just think that we're in a position here where we can help each other out is all. Love, Simon centers around Simon, a high schooler who is trying to figure out the identity of a classmate he's fallen in love with virtually. At the end of the movie, Simon agrees to meet with the student nicknamed Blue on the Ferris wheel. Can I sit there? I was kind of waiting for somebody. Yeah, I know. It turns out to be Bram, a classmate who Simon already has a bit of a crush on. Like Simon, we were given no indication that Bram even liked boys, so this was a pretty shocking one all around. Are you disappointed that it's me? No. Number 16. Who really gave Micah the STI? Easy A. When Lisa Kudrow shows up in a movie or television show, we're pretty much primed to like her character from the very beginning. That's what 10 years playing Phoebe Buffay will do for you. But her character in Easy A certainly threw us for a loop. No, that's my fault. I'm so sorry, Olive. I'm sorry, but I, I, I messed up. She plays Mrs. Griffith, the school guidance counselor. 
When Olive is blamed for giving popular boy Micah an STI, she learns that it's really Mrs. Griffith that Micah has been sleeping with. So then he's telling everybody that it was you, so he has to say because he didn't want me to lose my job and he doesn't want to get in trouble either, so he said it's you. Sorry. For pretty much the entire movie up until this point, Mrs. Griffith had been perfectly likable. The revelation that she's not only been sleeping with a student but gave him chlamydia is jaw-dropping. But I see no other alternative than to just live with the guilt. My guilt stems from my indiscretion and yours for lying. We made our choices. Now we just have to let it ride. Number 15. Cat's History with Joey. 10 Things I Hate About You. Cat Stratford is one of the most iconic female characters in the teen movie canon. She loves cool music, she doesn't suffer fools, and she hates dumb jocks like Joey. Your little Rambo look is out, Kat. Didn't you read last month's Cosmo? Run along. Yeah, Joey is obviously insufferable. And yet, through most of 10 Things I Hate About You, we're left wondering why Kat hates Joey so much. You know, beyond hating him for his terrible personality. Joey never told you that we went out, did he? Yeah, okay. In ninth for a month. Considering the way Kat avoids Joey like the plague, it's shocking for us to find out that they have a romantic past and that Joey pressured her into sleeping with him, only to dump her shortly after. That's the reason Kat is so fiercely individualistic. She knows the importance of following your own compass. After that, I swore I would never do anything just because everyone else was doing it. And I haven't since. With the exception of Bogey's party and my stunning digestive pyrotechnics. Number 14. Bee Sting, my girl. We knew he was allergic to everything, but we still weren't ready for this one. My Girl is one of the sweetest coming-of-age movies ever made, until it becomes one of the saddest. It centers around the friendship between Veda and Thomas J, a sickly boy without many friends. What do you think of me? For what? Well, if you don't get to marry Mr. Bixler. I guess. When Veda drops her ring near a beehive, Thomas J goes back to look for it. He gets stung by bees, which for anyone might not be a big deal. But because of his allergies, Thomas J ends up passing away. There were just too many of them. The moment is terrifying and shocking for audiences, but none more so than Veda. Her reaction is absolutely gut-wrenching. Put his glasses on! Put on his glasses! <laughs> he was gonna be an acrobat! Number 13, The Bus, Mean Girls. You know, someone getting hit by a bus usually isn't something you're preparing to see when you're watching a teen movie. Thanks to Mean Girls, however, we'll never be unprepared again. Some girls say they saw her head go all the way around, but that's just a rumor. Some people swear they saw me push her in front of the bus. That was an even worse rumor. After one of the most iconic scenes in the 2004 film, when Janice tells Regina, along with the whole school, that Katie has been lying to Regina about being friends with her, Regina runs outside. Katie follows and tries to apologize, but Regina is having none of it. Do you know what everyone says about you? They say that you're a homeschooled jungle freak who's a less hot version of me. Yeah. Her tirade is interrupted when she is rammed by a big yellow school bus. Regina doesn't die, despite Katie's instant reaction, but the first time you see it, it's definitely a bit of a jump scare. She fractured her spine and she still looks like a rock star. Thank you. Number 12, Keith's Cancer. Keith. With the way Keith acts during this whole movie, the reason had to be something as serious as this. It begins as a pretty standard teen romance centering on the relationship between high school students Natalie and Keith. So you don't remember? What? Well, I stood behind you in the sixth grade play. You were the princess, and I was Russian soldier number three. I don't remember that. Of course not. Princess never remembers the little people. The two grow closer and eventually end up striking a romance of sorts. But then strange things start happening like Keith disappearing for days on end and lying about where he lives. Where you been the last two weeks? Last two weeks? What, do you come here every day? There's something wrong with you, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there is. With me, <laughs> definitely with you. After the two have sex for the first time, Keith unceremoniously dumps Natalie, leaving her heartbroken. At the end of the film, however, we find out that he's dying of cancer and doesn't have much time left. 
Not only does this account for his strange behavior, but it makes us weep. I just wanted a little more time. So all in all, I'd say you're the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Goodbye, partner. Number 11, Scabbers, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Never trust a rat. He's not really a rat. Well, he was a rat. He was my brother Percy's rat. But then they gave him an owl. Point is, we know the truth. At the time that the third installment of the Harry Potter franchise came out, Ron Weasley's pet rat Scabbers had been a mainstay. But then, Harry finally comes face to face with Sirius Black, the man supposedly responsible for the death of his parents, and the truth comes out. No, Harry, it wasn't him. Somebody did betray your parents, but it was somebody who, until quite recently, I believe to be dead. Sirius was framed by his old pal, Peter Pettigrew, who has since been hiding in his animagus form, a rat. That's right, he's been hiding in plain sight ever since, and there is so much wrong with it. I said we take you to the castle. After that, the Dementors can have you. Number 10, It Was Just a Vision, The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn Part 2. To give them their due, the Twilight movies were faithful adaptations of Stephanie Meyer's books. She knows me. Your niece. And daughter. However, the ending took us all by surprise. For the finale of Breaking Dawn, the Cullens prepare to battle the Volturi. In the book, Bella saves the day with her protective shield and no one has to fight at all. In the movie, the battle goes ahead and beloved characters actually start dying. <laughs> this can't be happening, cried the book fans, but actually it wasn't. The battle was all a vision designed to persuade the Volturi leader that the odds wouldn't be in his favor if he proceeded with his plans. A bit of an anticlimax, maybe, but also a clever way to inject some action without depriving the fans of their happy ending. Nobody's ever loved anybody as much as I love you. There's one exception. Number 9, The Men Behind the Mask, Scream. Although you might not remember who's who from the original Scream movie, the infamous ghost face mask is still a common sight on Halloween night. The film parodies the slasher genre while giving the audience genuine scares. Is that you, Randy? And what movie is this from? I spit on your garage. One of the most frightening moments is the shocking revelation of the killer's true identity. There's no dramatic removal of the mask. No, instead, the truth dawns on Sydney while she's standing right in front of him. It's her boyfriend, Billy Loomis, alongside his best friend, Stu. Help me, please. Surprise, Sydney. The killer's ability to be in two places at once completely threw us off their scents. Several more local teens are dead, bringing to an end the harrowing mystery of the mass killing that has terrified this peaceful community. Number eight, Jace and Clary find out their siblings, though they aren't really. The Mortal Instruments City of Bones. The first novel in Cassandra Clare's Mortal Instruments series was adapted into a 2013 movie with hope that sequels would follow, but we never did get that second installment. I'm sorry, we didn't have a choice. I mean, we had to save Simon and Jace- Jace thinks he needs to save the world, but you don't need to encourage him to do it. This meant that moviegoers never got an answer to the crucial question. Were Jace and Clary really brother and sister? They begin the story as your typical love interests, they flirt, they kiss, they fall in love. And then they find out they have the same dad. Finally. Both my children together. My daughter. And my son. I'm so sorry, Clary. What is the audience supposed to do with that information? We can't unsee the kissing. So we can't understand the couple's decision to totally ignore their new knowledge and ride off into the sunset together. Look, Clary, I don't believe it. It doesn't feel like the truth, not in my heart. I, I just don't know how to look at the world anymore. At least the book fans knew the truth. Number seven, Prim Doesn't Make It, The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part Two. The Hunger Games began with Katniss's sacrifice, entering the games to save her sister. I volunteer! I volunteer! I volunteer! 
Solitaire's tribute! But while she was away, Prim grew up. She was no longer the helpless child who would be kept safe at home. You understand that whatever I do comes back to you and Mom. I don't want you to get hurt. You don't have to protect me. Or Mom. In fact, she became a trained medic and ended up on the front lines at the Capitol when two bombs were dropped by the rebels. The first incited the medics to help the injured. The second wreaked further devastation, but essentially ended the war. Prim was unfortunately caught in the calamity of the second bomb. Prim? Prim Prim? The distress of losing her right at the end was a devastating blow for Katniss and the viewers. It came as a shock and put a damper on the otherwise happy ending. Number 6. Jamie Tells Landon Her Secret – A Walk to Remember In the grand tradition of Nicholas Sparks' adaptations, A Walk to Remember begins as a love story, but tragedy is just around the corner. When bad boy Landon Carter is forced to participate in the school play as punishment, he forges a friendship with Jamie Sullivan. Are you sure you're okay? Mm hmm I'm fine. Thank you for everything. Jamie is the minister's daughter and a social misfit, but she makes Landon promise he won't fall in love with her. Naturally, he does fall for her, and it's only then he discovers the reason for her request. Jamie has leukemia and has stopped responding to treatment. The doctor said I should go on and live life normally as, as best I could. I, I don't want anybody to be weird around me. Including me? Especially you. It's a real gut punch for the audience. Just like Landon, we're about to have our happy ending cruelly snatched away. You're my angel. <laughs> Number 5. Aunt Helen – The Perks of Being a Wallflower Movies aimed at teenagers have a reputation for being trivial, but they often tackle serious issues. The Perks of Being a Wallflower is a coming-of-age drama about friendship but it also includes themes of mental illness, post-traumatic stress, and abuse. We accept the love we think we deserve. Can we make them know that they deserve more? Charlie, portrayed by Logan Lerman, is a shy freshman who struggles with bouts of depression. We are told that his Aunt Helen died in a car crash, but at the end of the movie, we discover that her death has had more of an effect on him than we formally realized. Charlie was sexually abused by Helen and has repressed the memories. But it'll be our little secret, okay? The revelation is appalling, but not gratuitous. Once we know the truth, everything makes more sense. I can see it. This one moment when you know you're not a sad story. You are alive. Number 4. Maddie is not really sick. Everything Everything. Everything Everything is a teen movie based on the book by Nicola Yoon. It follows Maddie, an 18-year-old who never leaves the house due to an immunity disorder known as Skid. Her mother insists that she stay inside and doesn't mix with people, purely for her own safety. You didn't have to take the day off. I always take the day off. What do you want to do today? Same thing we always do. But when Maddie starts to fall for the boy next door, it becomes more difficult to follow her mom's wishes. I don't want to lose you. I can't even go outside. What are you really losing? As it turns out, however, she could have broken the rules a long time ago. At the end of the movie, it is revealed that Maddie isn't sick at all. Her mom has Munchausen by proxy. Where are the papers, Mom? What are, what are you talking about? You have records for everything, but you have nothing about Skit! Maddie's only problems are caused by staying inside too much and being over-medicated. Number 3. The Date on the Board – Remember Me Remember Me is a gentle love story, a coming-of-age tale, and a family drama about grief. You couldn't wear a tie? I could've. It also has one of the most intense endings ever committed to film. Viewers may have wondered why the movie appeared to be set in the recent past rather than the present. That was revealed in the final scenes. Tyler, played by Robert Pattinson, waits for his father in his office after mending their rocky relationship. Meanwhile, Tyler's sister Caroline is in a classroom where we catch the sight of the date on the blackboard. It's September 11th, 2001. Caroline. Hello.
The camera then pans out from Pattinson, and we realize that he's in the World Trade Center. If the filmmakers were going for shock value, they definitely achieved it. Whatever you do in life will be insignificant. But it's very important that you do it. Number two, Augustus's diagnosis, The Fault in Our Stars. Augustus Waters and Hazel Grace Lancaster meet at a cancer support group. What? I didn't say anything. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you're beautiful. <laughs> She's getting worse. He's in remission. This is Hazel's story, and Augustus is cast as the eccentric but charming love interest who will help her experience life before she has to face her death. Okay. Okay. This is what we expected from the premise of The Fault in Our Stars. What we didn't bank on was the return of Gus's condition. We knew we were getting a tragedy, but we weren't expecting Gus's death. The moment where Augustus tells Hazel the truth is made all the more heartbreaking by two incredible acting turns from Shailene Woodley and Ansel Elgort. Hey, listen. Don't you worry about me, Hazel Grace, okay? I'm gonna find a way to hang around here and annoy you for a long time. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Maze is an Experiment – The Maze Runner The Maze Runner might not be the most memorable movie from the teen dystopia craze, but it does have the most dramatic final reveal. At the beginning of the movie, a boy named Thomas finds himself dropped into the world of the maze. You only have three rules. First, do your part. No time for any freeloaders. He and the other gladers work together to defeat the trials thrown at them. In a final shocking twist, we discover that the teens are part of an experiment. A deadly virus has devastated the planet, and they are essentially lab rats. Hello. My name is Dr. Ava Page. I'm Director of Operations of the World Catastrophe Kill Zone Department. The maze is designed to test the subject's strength and provide humanity with hope for a cure. It's an intriguing reveal and sets us up for the sequel. So let's move forward. It's time now to begin phase two. Which moment caught you completely off guard? Let us know in the comments below. I wanted to let you make up your own mind about him. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.